Hello world, welcome to the Sega of Git, the undisputed king of distributed version control systems, created by the legendary Linus Torvalds. It's now the backbone of developers from solo coders in their basements to tech giants like Google and Microsoft. In a nutshell, Git is a version control system. Picture it as a magical ledger that records every change made to a file or set of files over time. It allows you to travel back to any specific version, like checkpoints in your favorite video game, saving you from the abyss of coding mishaps. These days, knowing Git is as fundamental for developers as knowing how to breathe. It's such a given that it's not even mentioned in job listings anymore. It's just assumed you have it under your belt. Then there is GitHub, Git's trusted sidekick. GitHub is not only a powerhouse tool for individual and team development, but also a showcase for a developer's portfolio. It's a stage where you can flaunt your projects to potential employers and wall them with your coding prowess. Let's set our time machine to a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away where prehistoric programmers don't infer were painstakingly copying files to separate directories to safeguard their work. The truly enlightened ones even timestamped file names to keep track of changes. It was a dark age indeed. But as the internet spread its tentacles and collaboration became essential, centralized version control systems like CVS, Subversion, and Perforce emerged. These systems relied on a central server to store all file versions, with clients fetching files from this digital citadel. Naturally, this setup had a glaring Achilles heel. If the server went kaput, it took the entire project down with it. Then, like a knight in shining armor, came distributed version control systems such as Git, Mercurial, Bazaar, and Dux. These heroes didn't just let you download a snapshot of the project at a given moment, they allowed you to clone the entire repository. If one server bit the dust, any client repository could rise from the ashes, ensuring work continued seamlessly. Each copy was a full backup, a digital clone ready to step in. Distributed version control systems also brought the ability to juggle multiple remote repositories and collaborate with various teams simultaneously. This multitasking marvel meant you could apply different approaches within the same project without a hitch. Imagine you are a web designer in a team of stellar developers working on your magnum opus. Without a version control system, you're a sitting duck when things go south. But if you're wise enough to harness the power of Git, you'll feel like a Jedi master controlling time, space, and sanity. With Git, you can revert any or all files to a state before someone decided Comic Sans was the font of the future. Its user-friendly command let you track every change, identify who made them and who approved them. And if disaster strikes and someone manages to wreck the project or lose files, fear not. Git's got your back, everything is fixable and reversible. It's like having an undo button for your entire project, a true lifesaver in the world of development. So why, you ask, does Git still reign supreme on the iron throne of version control systems, even after all these years? Let's travel back to 2005, a time of epic battles between a Linux kernel developers and a commercial overlord, BitKeeper. BitKeeper, once a trusted ally, went proprietary, sparking outrage among the open source faithful. Enter Linus Torvalds, the Penguin King, who rallied his forces and forged Git, a simple distributed system with support for non-linear development. Fun fact, Git has nothing to do with guitars. In British slang, Git means a foolish or worthless person. The official line is that Git stands for Global Information Tracker, but Torvalds himself admitted it's a backronym, a term coined post factum. Here's the thing, Git's approach to data is what sets it apart from other systems like CVS, Subversion, Perforce, and Bazaar. Traditional systems store data as a series of file changes over time. 
Git, however, takes snapshots of the entire file system. Each time you commit a change, Git saves the state of your files and creates a reference to this snapshot. If a file hasn't changed, Git doesn't store it again. It simply links back to the previous unchanged version. Most Git operations happen locally, meaning you're not left twiddling your thumbs waiting for a server's response. You don't even need an internet connection unless you're pushing to a remote repository like GitHub. This makes a local coding a breeze with a Wi-Fi connection only necessary for syncing. Git uses hash sums long sequences of alphanumeric characters to uniquely identify files and their content. Everything in Git is referenced by its hash sum rather than by name. This built-in functionality is fundamental to Git's philosophy. Almost every action in Git adds new data to the dataset, making it nearly impossible to lose data or perform irreversible actions. Regular synchronization with remote repositories further ensures data safety, turning Git into a playground for fearless experimentation. Git files can exist in three main stages, modified, staged, and committed. When you modify a file, Git notes the change, but does nothing more. When you stage a file, you're telling Git it's ready for the next commit. It's in the waiting room, anticipating the commit train. Committing is the final step, submitting the changes to the database for safe storage. A Git project comprises three main areas, the Git directory, the working tree, and the staging area. The Git directory stores metadata and the entire project codebase. It's the heart of Git. Copy it whenever you clone a repository. The working tree is your project's single representation, unpacked from Git's compressed database straight to your hard drive. The staging area records information about what will be included in the next commit, a collection of changes awaiting the commit operation. So what's the Git workflow? First, you modify files in your working tree. Then you add your changes to the staging area. Finally, when you commit, those changes are saved in your Git directory. Naturally, a gem like Git inspired the creation of web services designed to store code online, catering to lone developers and massive teams alike, and to GitHub born in 2007 from the collaboration of four visionaries, Tom Preston Werner, Chris Wanstrat, and PJ Hyatt, and Scott Chasen. There is a strong suspicion that GitHub played a pivotal role in catapulting Git into the mainstream spotlight. Since all four founders were Ruby developers, the buzz about this cool new tool quickly spread through the Ruby community. When the Ruby on Rails framework itself migrated to GitHub, the community followed suit, solidifying GitHub's reputation. GitHub isn't the only player in this arena. Competitors like GitLab and Bitbucket also exist, but GitHub reigns supreme, boasting the largest number of repositories. It's also entangled in an intriguing narrative with Microsoft. One co-founder, Preston Werner, eventually resigned amid allegations of bullying and inappropriate complaint procedures. Yet the Sega of Git is just as much about its corporate romance with Microsoft, a company once considered an unlikely champion of open source projects. Once upon a time, Microsoft had its own competing product. TFVC, and former CEO Steve Ballmer infamously dubbed Linux a cancer. But in the world of corporate giants, money talks louder than all grudges. By 2012, Microsoft began courting the open source community, significantly contributing to the libgit 2 library, a boom for developers. In 2013, Git was integrated into Visual Studio. By 2014, under new leadership, Microsoft stopped penalizing employees for not using its proprietary version control system, and in 2015, they hired a key Git contributor. By 2017, Git had become the backbone of almost all internal development at Microsoft. Then came the bombshell. In June 2018, Microsoft acquired GitHub for a staggering $7.5 billion, securing the largest code repository 
on the planet. Skeptics initially thought Microsoft was just the wealthy dad buying his kid an entire football team instead of just a uniform. However, by summer 2021, the rationale became clearer. On June 29th, 2021, GitHub Copilot was unveiled. Developed by OpenAI, in which Microsoft has a stake, Copilot is an AI tool designed to assist programmers, pointing out errors and suggesting code snippets. The official line claims Copilot was trained on billions of lines from public GitHub repositories, though some remain skeptical about whether only public data was used. This led to a noticeable exodus from GitHub. But rest assured, Microsoft's journey with Git and GitHub is far from over. The story of their relationship hints at grand plans and deeper integrations with GitHub Copilot already making waves, the future is bound to bring more innovative uses of this powerful platform. GitHub Actions, for instance, the platform's automation and CI-CD tool has seen enhancement like single-use self-hosted runners and public beta support for migrations from Bamboo Server and Data Center. These updates aim to streamline workflow automation and improve developer productivity. Security remains a top priority for GitHub. Recent updates include advanced security features in GitHub Actions, enhanced secret scanning and dependency reviews. GitHub Advanced Security has been made available for Azure DevOps, bringing robust security measures to more development environment. Microsoft's vision for GitHub is deeply intertwined with AI advancements. The company continues to push GitHub Copilot, which has been shown to help developers code up to 55% faster. This tool has been adopted by over a million developers and thousands of organizations, highlighting its significant impact on the development process. If you've enjoyed watching this video, you'll surely love the next one. Make sure to watch it too. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in a bite.